Hello, 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 and welcome to Courageously Kind. I'm Maddie. And I'm Liz. We're twin sisters and best friends. Together, we share stories of especially kind humans doing especially kind things in hopes that these conversations motivate and inspire you to be kinder to yourself and others. When we're not speaking with an incredible guest, we'll speak directly from our hearts about what it means to us to be courageously kind. This week we are talking to an amazing woman. She is an author, a podcaster, a photographer, and a body image educator. I had never heard of a body image educator. Me either. Until we found Terry. Yeah. But what an amazing thing. What a necessary role in our society today. Totally. Totally. We talked about a lot of awesome things she's got going on. Body image boot camp was Mm. the first thing I found. And Terry will tell you all about it. But it is essentially about a Mm week-long workshop for people that want to work on their their body image and their self-esteem and and I love that she mentions in this episode that sometimes body image is just the tip of the iceberg Mm -hmm. and that there's a lot of other emotional mental spiritual work that can be done in addition to you know wanting to improve your body image um But yeah, Terry was just so awesome, and she's so... I love the way that she explains things. Mm -hmm. She'll talk about the geode theory, Mm -hmm. which is a really, really beautiful theory and and has to do with not only our physical selves, but our mental and spiritual selves, too. And yeah, she was just so awesome. We talked a lot about the sort of work that she does as a body image educator, Mm -hmm. but also we talked about like, like running a business with like good and pure intentions in mind Mm -hmm. and you know, creating the life that you want to create. And it was just a really, really awesome and also eye-opening conversation, for sure. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to chat with you and about all that you do and who you are. And it's so, so awesome. I'm so excited. Thank you. You want to start by introducing yourself. This is always like the uh, icebreaker part, but I promise you have a fun icebreaker question after this (laughs) where are you from what do you like to do for fun in your free time all that good stuff sure uh so I live in Winnipeg Manitoba Canada um and recently what I like to do for fun because it is summertime is sit outside on my deck and either write or read or just sometimes nap depending on the sun (laughs) yes love it yeah as soon as the as soon as the sun comes out I turn into a cat essentially and just fall asleep so Totally. <laughs> totally. This is Liz's that. favorite icebreaker yeah. question. Yeah. She's been asking it to every guest this season. Okay. So I, I hate like the generic, like, what's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? So my favorite question is, it's so stupid. If you were a kitchen appliance or utensil, what would you be and why? Mm, that's a, I don't know. I've never had to think of that before. If I was a kitchen utensil um let me see maybe like uh a bowl (laughs) because I feel I hold a lot of things all the time yeah and my mom always said I collected stuff all the time when I was a kid um but also I take on a lot of things which obviously a bowl can like handle a lot of things but I would be one of the bowls that is very difficult to break (laughs) Oh yes, good yeah, one, exactly. good answer. The one bowl your kitchen is like dirty. You use it for everything: yeah. cereal, ice cream, soup. Yeah, yeah. perfect. It. Yeah, and it's got like the cool like design on the outside. You know, like the teal with the like fun design. Yeah, that yeah. would be great. wonderful yeah. answer. I love that every single person's answer to this question has been a little bit different, but there's always like a <laughs> like a little sweet meaning behind yeah. it. I love that. Getting to more of the point of why we're here to talk to you today. <laughs> I found you via Instagram and I saw a post about body image boot camp and Mm. absolutely fell in love with it. Can you explain a little bit about what body image boot camp is? Where did the idea come from and what, what does it all entail? I absolutely love it so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So when I, I used to do a boudoir photography and I started to notice really early on that every single client I had hated the way they looked they hated something about themselves. And that made me realize like we have people that have the stereotypical like beauty standard bodies and they still hated themselves and everybody in between. And if everybody hates their body, then it can't be about the body, right? 
great. So yeah. I was like, okay, I need to look more into this. And so just for my own personal, I don't know, curiosity, I was like, let's look into the psychology behind body image. Yeah. And I started to host roundtable discussions at my studio okay. just to get more in-person experience and information to collect data. Yeah. And then I took all that data and turned it into a course, which started out in my studio as like a six week course where people would come. We'd have specific topics to talk on every day. Um, but I realized like I, as one person can only do so much. And my bigger mission in the world is to have maximum impact while I'm on this planet. Love that. And Absolutely. Yeah. And so one of the ways that I can do that, though, is by teaching other people how to teach that content or like educating them. So then they'll go forward, right? The ripple effect. And so I launched the first international body image boot camp in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Um, In 2018, it was the first time I took it international with uh, a bunch of other boudoir photographers because I was like, oh, they already have the communities of clients that are interested in these topics they just don't know the psychology aspect so I can bring that to them to help them and then after about two years of doing that I realized like people said they were coming for their business but then they mostly just ended up coming to these things to learn about themselves their own body image uh, and things like that so it's kind of evolved over time as uh, you know information also has changed but we're going on our fifth year now uh, because we had to take one year off thanks to the pandemic. But uh, yeah, so we're going on our our fifth year this year and that'll happen in October and we'll do two classes, usually back to back. So yeah, it's a really good time and currently still hosting in Puerto Vallarta, but like next year we're looking at expanding into Europe, hopefully. Um, yeah, and to see what's out there. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's a multiple day event, right? It's like, it's kind of like a retreat for people, right? Yeah. Explain like what yeah. goes on during those days. Yeah. So it's an entire week, basically like five days, six or however you say that, like six nights, no, six days, five nights or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Mon- Monday to Saturday. Usually this year Perfect. we had to change it a little bit because the place we stay at had other people renting. And I was like, oh, gotcha. we have to go on <laughs> like a Thursday to Tuesday or something. But, um, And so, yeah, so the first few days are spent, uh, the the way I used to do it, I've actually changed the structure of it um, because the year after the pandemic, lots of people's flights were delayed. So some people didn't make it into the next day that they were supposed to arrive. So we had to change the way things were structured and it actually worked out better. Um, So previously I would teach all the content in the first two days, but now what I do is I teach uh little segments of it uh first thing in the morning and then we'll have our afternoons to kind of relax and chill out a little bit which is more beneficial for everyone so um yeah and then we have one day which is what we call like the free day essentially where we'll go down we'll take the people down to the beach we have like this tiny little swimming spot if they want to swim they can also stay at the house if they are just like nope I just want to be by myself yeah um and then Beth the other person that I that helps me put this on she's my logistics queen I am not that person (laughs) She is great at logistics. So she will uh, take people into town and help like talk to them about the history. And she's fluent in Spanish. So um, yeah, so she really makes that a really good experience for them. And then uh, we also offer massages. So people, if they want massages, they'll get massages done, um, which helps you connect with your body in a different way. Yeah. So it really is just like we're, a lot of bonding happens. Um, obviously, we're learning stuff in the middle of the day, but I truly believe the actual magic or the like really good stuff comes out in the conversation after the class has been taught as much as I, you know, I'm the teacher, but I still like <laughs> when they're talking together in the pool yeah. or the even the transformation we see from people day one until about day three when you're in this like yeah space of radical inclusivity i love absolutely love that i love how holistic it feels too Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it feels like you are really putting a lot of intention behind like making sure everybody feels like totally body mind Mm -hmm. soul like taken care of Mm -hmm. on this week i absolutely love that yeah you also have a beautiful book called the geode theory can you explain what the geode theory is and how you use this as a metaphor for for people and how people can connect with their authentic selves. 
Yeah, uh, similar to Body Image Bootcamp, I came up with the concept for the geotheory like five years before I wrote the book. Like mm -hmm. I bought the domain, I probably have an Instagram account somewhere, but like I, I was like, I, I can see what it's going to be, but I didn't know exactly how I was going to like make it into something because I didn't have that knowledge yet. But yeah. essentially the whole idea is that we are geodes and over our life we get beaten down, we get under all this pressure and all of the sparkly stuff that we're born with just kind of like goes away. It gets hidden behind all these like should be's and have to's and all this like beauty standards and all of it. And to be honest, body image is just the outer layer. It is yeah. like the tip of the iceberg. There yeah. is so much more underneath. It's yeah. just easier for us to dislike the, the physical thing, the tangible part of ourselves, because the rest of it is so much harder because you can't see it so you don't oh that makes so much sense yeah. yeah but at the same point all that stuff that we go through all the like maybe it's teasing or the hardship or the trauma all those things also create this immense pressure which actually also helps us yeah. create even a, a more sparkly inside if you will like all that pressure just like a geode over time it's the pressure that causes it to create these like sparkly bits right and sometimes yep. it takes tipping away at the outside but the analogy I use at the beginning of the book is you can't just like well you can you can't just like smash it open and yeah. like it's fixed because yeah. you will break all the all the everything right yeah. and do it'll be just complete destruction so you have to take your time and slowly chip away at different parts of your mindset around it and so the structure of the book or the geo theory is essentially based on a positive psychology method that I learned called perma V, which essentially takes you through different segments, which the company that taught me that they believed like it's called the flourishing Academy that I learned from. Um, but perma V essentially the way that you work through things, it like slowly opens you up more and more and more. So by the time you get like more fully opened, you're open to the idea of how can I treat my body with respect now that you now that you see it as yeah. your partner and not the enemy. Yeah. It's like, okay, now we have a relationship with it. Now, how do we start to take care of it in terms of sleeping, food, nutrition, all these things that have been taken away from us in diet culture? Oh. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's kind of like an unfolding of the sparkly bits within. But again, just like I was saying, like, the, it's not about the body. Every most of the exercises in there, are like at the beginning, yeah, it talks about it. But most of the exercises are like, what are you making your body mean? Yeah. Which is the big question to ask. Oh, wow. I never thought about it like that. But that yeah. is such a beautiful healing way to think. I absolutely love yeah. that so much. Oh, good. Ooh, good, 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 good. <laughs> I love it. So good. You also have a podcast called yeah. <laughs> Switch. <laughs> yes. So it started out a few years ago. I started one called Beyond the Body, where it was heavily focused on body image. But I realized, like, I don't want to, because body image isn't about the body. I was so tired of just talking about bodies all the time. Yeah. And I was like, we also have to talk about all these other things that contribute to body image, all yeah. the mindset stuff. And yeah. so what I call squidge is like that feeling that we get when we're very uncomfortable, mm -hmm. whether we're being confronted with a new way to do things, a new way to act, mm -hmm. um, or we've acted a certain way and we're like, oh, that doesn't that doesn't feel good anymore yeah. um so I call that feeling squidgy and I always do this action because I feel it right here when I yeah. think about it always like neck to chest anxiety basically is what yes, you <laughs> yes. But, but yeah so I call the podcast the squidge and when, a lot of it is interviews with other people that have kind of confronted that squidgy feeling and instead of coping the way they would have always done they chose a different way. They chose to level up and say, you know what? I'm done believing this. I'm done, you know, with this behavior. It's not who I want to be. And even though it's hard, I'm going to try to do things a different way. I'm going to try to see things or I'm going to become somebody that rises above this instead of just falling back into old behaviors and coping mechanisms. So, yeah. So basically, it's just like interviewing people about life because- <laughs> everybody gets squishy feelings about everything so anybody yeah. could be a guest on the podcast yeah 
I oh love that. Gosh, I love it. Squidgy, oh, I feel like, is the perfect word. The perfect I know exactly word. what, what yes. you mean. Right. It's one of those, what do they call it? Like an on, onomatopoeia or whatever, where yes. it's like the word sounds like the sounds. thing that it is? Yes. Squidgy. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Is there an interview from Squidge that sticks out to you? I, I People ask us this, and it's really hard to pick like a favorite, mm-hmm. but is there a, an interview or a guest that you feel like has it impacted you or moved you in a way that that you'll always remember? Um, I think all of them have obviously had their own like special magic. I will say one of them with uh, Camille, she's like my, she uh, does abundance breakthrough is her thing, but I actually ended up hiring her as my own personal coach after our podcast. So like, I was like, okay, ma'am, like, you know what you're doing. (laughs) So I guess like in that respect, she's the one that probably had the biggest impact because I was like, I need to pay you for this. (laughs) (laughs) I need more of this in my life. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, but all of them have been really good. Like I've talked to death doulas and just mm. yesterday I recorded a podcast, which will come out for season two, um, about the link between birth and death and um, like how that like, so it's just like all these things that make us really uncomfortable and are quite uncomfortable to talk about or own up to or um, say out loud, even yeah. sometimes yeah. that yeah. it's like just yeah it's really uncomfortable to have those conversations but I think the more like my thing has always been anytime my brain says like don't don't put that on the (laughs) internet I'm like this is exactly when I have to put this on the internet like I need there's got to be at least one other person in the world that is thinking this thought experiencing this thing and I need to trust the universe will get this to them so they feel less alone and then that makes me feel less alone. And so that's what I feel with the podcast is like, yeah. you know, if it doesn't necessarily, it may not impact my life immediately, yeah. but the per- the right person is going to hear it at the right time. Yeah. And it's going to give them just a little oomph to get them through to like, do, you know, whatever the thing is they need to do. Yeah. Like, I think everything's like a sign, you know what yes. I mean? yeah totally Absolutely. Oh, I can't wait to listen to that episode with a death doula that's something yeah. Liz and I talk a lot about death oh, which is kind of weird you. but oh. and I feel like you wouldn't expect like we are a podcast about kindness we've never talked about like death yeah. on the podcast before but I can I- introduce I'll introduce you to her if you want to I'll send you oh, her information you awesome. can have her on your podcast yeah oh that God. would be awesome because that was a conversation yeah. we had we yeah. we experienced loss a couple years ago our grandma passed away um and it was the first time we ever experienced loss mm-hmm. like that and we just mm-hmm. talked a lot about death and how we don't talk I feel like as a society we it's this thing we don't talk about until it happens and it's like oh my god why haven't we been talking about like this like and then it's like there's like a time limit on your grief and like yeah like oh you're still like sad about that and it's like yeah I'll be sad forever because I don't literally person yeah 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll give you her contact information that would be awesome that would be so cool yeah 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 those conversations, those hard conversations, like you said, the ones that like, you're like, oh, I don't know if we should talk about this are the ones that need mm-hmm. to be talked about and need to be. Yeah, because like, I always say like, we're special, but we're not that special. Like, yes. we're, all still, we're all humans. And so yeah. we all have basic human needs and yeah. thoughts. And a lot yeah. of the times it is the thoughts that we have that can make us feel like we have to isolate ourselves because we're like, oh, God, people are going to think I'm weird or bad yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And then when, when we realize like, oh, there's like one other person at least that mm-hmm. thinks like this. It's like, oh, thank God. Like I'm not <laughs> alone. I'm not because our biggest fear, right? Like biologically or evolutionary is that we want to belong. And if we, and if our thoughts convince us that, oh, this is the thing that's going to make you not belong, like you will self isolate which is not helpful because then you get in your own um you know you've just created you've created a self-fulfilling prophecy essentially yeah yeah and um, and then the longer you don't tell somebody about it the bigger or scarier it gets yeah. so I'm just like just like whatever this is why having a therapist if you're not ready to put it on the internet don't you don't have to do that <laughs> But like write in a journal, like even that helps because then you're talking to yourself to be like, wait, objectively, that isn't as bad as I thought it was. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Absolutely love that. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Terry, you're so smart. I could listen to you all day. Thanks. <laughs> all day. You are offering a course on your website called Empowerment for Everybody, which I love. How does this course, you mentioned like, 
helping people build their heart centered business. And oh, I love that. I think that is so good. How does that course, how does that course help people do that? And how, what does like having a heart centered business mean to you? Yeah. So originally I created it more so for photographers, just because that again is like what I can speak to. Um, But yeah. after teaching it, this is my fourth time. We're in the middle of it right now. So we're on the fourth round. And I do want to restructure it so that it can be open to any creative business owner. But I find like there's two different kind of camps of entrepreneurs. And I just heard these terms recently, so I can't take credit for them. But there's what's considered a growth entrepreneur, which is where they're they're concerned with like scaling KPIs, like business actual business plans like you know the important thing like their their yeah. whole like excitement comes from the business like running yeah. a business um but then on the other camp we have what i would consider to be lifestyle entrepreneurs which is more what i would fall into yeah um and hearing this helped me realize like i'm not failing at being an entrepreneur i'm just mm. doing it differently than how we've been taught it should be done right yes. And so lifestyle entrepreneurs, they work for themselves in a way to create the life that they want to create for themselves. Sometimes this looks like not making as much money. This sometimes looks like taking that pay cut so you can have time freedom um, Mm -hmm. to do other things, like whatever life that you want to create for yourself. Sometimes it can look like making X amount of money. So you can do this thing over here. Like, but it it's less focused on just always scaling and the money and da, da, da. it's more focused on purpose, I think. Love at that. least I think so. Purpose yeah. outside of scaling a business. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, when I created the empowerment for everybody course, interestingly enough, when I first started creating it, yeah. I actually went into creating it like my other courses, which was like, here's how to do the things like here's a tutorial you know and then as I was creating it this is sometimes what happens my (laughs) body just does the work and then I'm like what am I doing (laughs) my body takes a minute to catch up yeah but eventually it ended up being a 12-week course where I'm just asking questions I'm not telling people how to build or structure their business I'm saying why do you do what you do yeah. And just yeah. sit with it. Why are you yeah. doing the things that you're doing? Yeah. How do yeah. you really want to be doing the things that you're doing? Now let's strategize to create a plan for how that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, because I, well, what worked for me may not work for anybody else. So I give case studies of things yeah. like I've done and tried, but ultimately people have their own answers. And a lot of times when we get into entrepreneurship, especially as creatives, we have a very hard time charging money. We have yeah. a very hard time um, understanding that our time is worth something. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of that kind of stuff missing from how to structure a business, but also not falling into doing it the way that everybody else is doing it. Like so many people are like, I can't wait to work for myself. So I don't have to work on nine to five. Yeah. I guarantee you. of creatives are working nine to five, if not nine to nine. (laughs) Um, That's exactly what I did. And because we do need some sort of suggestion, right? When there's no plan in front of us, we'll take whatever plan comes along because we're scared more than anything else. And so I was like, you know what? People have the answers that they want. They're just afraid to choose them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like all my all my courses are like, here's like the uh, the main thing is this, but really it's just group coaching and therapy for like 12 weeks. Love that. So the question, much. why do you think that? Why like what stories are getting in the way from you doing exactly what you want to do, how you want to do it? Um, you know, yeah, it it was all the the same process I had to go through with myself to actually get out of photographing clients. Because yeah. I thought, I was like, no, I have to say, this is what I do. Um, like, yeah. I was so attached to my identity as yes. a photographer and doing things the way everyone else was. Yeah. I was so depressed. Yeah. I hated everything because I wasn't doing it my way. Yeah. I was doing it the way I thought I had to do it in order to yeah. be successful. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, now I just kind of help other creatives like that don't feel they fit in the other camp to kind of be like, well, what do you want? Like just to at the very least acknowledge what you want. Yes. I love that. That's the hard thing. 
yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. that's hitting home for us I feel like it's just like totally. we are halfway through college mm-hmm. and we're studying communications and there's no clear like this is the yeah. job you're going to get after school and we we both have talked about like wanting to own our own business maybe someday we don't know what that's going to look like mm-hmm. or what but I love the concept of asking yourself those questions mm-hmm. and going inward and like you said the answers are inside you you're you're maybe just scared to uncover yeah. them yeah. that all hits so so oh. close to home for us totally for sure and that's like I'm like uh, I'm working with Camille now the coach yeah. I was telling you about and so I'm at this next stage where I'm like I don't know what I want and she's like every day that I meet with her she's like oh and here you are you don't know what you want and yet look at this list that we've just uncovered yeah and I'm like I do know what I want but I'm just afraid to level up to it or and let's examine why you're afraid to level up like what are you afraid is going to happen if you have this life and so one of the we were just talking yesterday about how I'm like "Ah, I'm a little worried about next year like I don't know there's nothing really planned and like scarcity sets in when you're Mm -hmm. like worried yeah and she's like well what do you want it to look like and I was like what (laughs) I was like well what you get if there's nothing there you can create what it looks like what what would you want it to look like yeah I was like oh oh I didn't realize that (laughs) I get get to create that whatever that is because I've always been so future focused and just kind of assuming I knew what the next thing was because somebody had laid the path for me for the most part I still kind of go off on my own a lot but yes it was just a really good reminder like oh I get to decide if there's if I haven't fully booked out the year ahead then that means I get to choose what that year is going to look like and I I was like oh yeah which can be daunting though that's part of the I think part of the issue with a lot of like people your age or that are coming out of college it's like they're like well there's too many options yeah Mm -hmm. Right. So you get analysis paralysis. What if I choose yeah. the wrong thing? What yeah. if I do this? And I had to learn for myself, like any choice you make isn't wrong. You'll always yeah. learn something. Either you'll learn that, oh, this ain't it. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Or you'll be like, oh, there's something in this that I like. Love right. That. Yeah. Instead of being like, I have to wait for the perfect thing to come along. It's like, let me just start trying something mm-hmm. and see what I like within this love that so much so so much having the courage to say yeah I'm gonna try it and and yeah I love that and there's no wrong decision Mm -hmm. so comforting yeah comforting feeling of like it doesn't matter what direction you go in yeah you're gonna end up on the path that you're meant to end up right absolutely yeah I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason anyways like everything I've ever done like Mm -hmm. If you had asked me when I was in university, if this is what I would be doing and like having like this kind of impact that I'm having, I would have been like, oh no, what are you talking about? Be a school teacher. Like that was the original plan, right? And I am teaching. Yeah. Just like in a very much more cooler way for me (laughs) that doesn't, that allows me to use my strengths and allows me freedom and creativity and like, yeah, I'm able to take all the, not all the things, but a lot of the things that I love to do and put them together and not feel held to having to do it in a certain way. Yeah. Um. So that's why, yeah, when people are like around your age, I'm like, hey, whatever you're planning on doing, just be okay. It's going to change. Like, <laughs> over. Yeah. Which is good because you collect yeah. skills with every single thing that you do, even if you're yes. working at a restaurant or a you know in retail yeah. like you are gonna learn so much about running a business that <laughs> that will help you when you become an entrepreneur yes. so I love that mm-hmm. absolutely love that yeah this has been awesome this has been so awesome I feel like every conversation we have it's like inspirational and motivating but this is like really like motivating yes. <laughs> <laughs> good that's awesome yes. Totally, totally, totally. We have one final question for you. Yeah. We've been asking this to every single guest that has been on the show so far this season. And I love it because everybody has kind of a different answer, but they're all sort of along the same lines. What does kindness mean to you? Mm, Kindness. You know, what's interesting. I had to shift from being nice to being kind. This idea that I had to be nice. Um, As a good girl, I was I learned early on that, oh, I need to be nice to people. I need, you know, and you lose yourself a lot in niceness. Absolutely. But kindness 
is no expectation. So mm -hmm. it allows you to lean into the character that you want to build within yourself, I think. Mm -hmm. And I remember a specific instance and I'll keep it short, but um, when I, so I was at a hostel when I was traveling around in my young twenties <laughs> and there was a guy that came into the room that he was staying in the room with me. And he was like, Hey, oh hi and I was like hi oh and then I was offering like do you want like toast or, like you can have some of my stuff like just being super nice yeah nice um yeah. and then I went and brushed my teeth and I came back and then what and he was like no I'm going to Starbucks so I was like cool and then yeah. I went to go book a flight or something and I was like where the hell's my credit card where's all my money he had stolen all no. my stuff <gasps> and I was like how could he I'm so yeah, I was so nice I was yes. so nice to him yeah. and that's when I realized I was like oh why did I expect him to be nice in exchange that's not kindness that's a transaction I was expecting yes. something in return yeah right and so I realized like kindness is like regardless of how the other person acts yeah it doesn't matter if you're truly being kind um that. it's the same thing when we hold doors open for people that didn't ask us to hold the door open and we're like uh, yes. and they don't say thank you and we're like you're welcome and super passive aggressive it's like yeah. you didn't ask you to do it you made yourself be the hero yes and now you're expecting somebody to thank you for that no that's not kindness that's you saying me, give me something in exchange whether it's love like or whatever yes. so yeah so kindness is giving without expectation and it's that. definitely not being nice yes love I love that, that. I yeah. just made a TikTok about yeah. the difference between nice and kind and it's the same thing I, I found for me like being nice is rooting in like people pleasing mm -hmm. and wanting people to like I me and I want you yeah. like me I'm gonna do this thing I'm gonna act this way and kindness is is so not that and mm -hmm. it's so so much more rooted in an authentic connection and like you said non-transactional and thank you so I need to just like sit with everything I that know, this that conversation true. has given us this has been so wonderful you are so wonderful yeah. thank you so much oh, for sharing you. your time and your energy with us today if people want to support you or work with you how can they do so and where can they find you uh, probably Instagram's the easiest, which is just Terry Hofford. So T E R I H O F F O R D. Um, and that's where I do the most consistent writing, I would say. Uh, but also you can head to my website, which is terryhofford.com. Again, T E R I H O F F O R D, because lots of people spell it wrong. Um, and yeah, and that's where you'll find like all the education stuff, body image links to body image boot camp, my blog, which also I write on, my books, my podcast, like it's all. All the stuff. Love it. Uh, yeah and those would be the two main places on facebook as well but i think like maybe your audience maybe doesn't go on facebook so perfect well, like, anyways, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. perfect 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 thank you so much yeah, this, this was amazing this is awesome you were awesome it was such a joy to meet you and connect with you today this is so so awesome oh thank you guys for having me one of my favorite things that Terry talks about is squidgy feelings. <laughs> <laughs> that just made so much sense mm -hmm. to me. And she has a podcast called Squidge, which she mentions in the show, um, that I absolutely love. And you should you should definitely check it out because um, I just, I love that style of like candid, open, honest conversations and talking about things that may be uncomfortable to talk mm -hmm. about, but you know most of the time are so necessary to talk about. Yeah, you know, like, not to just, like, promote podcasts in general right now, <laughs> but this could be a great way for you to start feeling more comfortable having these conversations by listening to other people have the conversation. It could be a great way to start to feel a little bit more comfortable with these uncomfortable topics. Totally. Totally. Check out Terry's Instagram and website linked in the description below mm -hmm. and you can find links to her book and body image boot camp and the podcast and all that good stuff huge thank you to Terry for being on the show and yeah we love you and we'll see you back here real soon we'd like to give a huge thank you to Anna Waltz Landscape Contracting for their support of Courageously Kind Anna Waltz is a family-owned landscape contracting company in Berks County that has served Pennsylvania for over 35 years. If you're ready to get your landscaping project started, visit AnnaWaltzLandscape.com or call 610-916-7070. Anna Waltz Landscape Contracting, beautifying Pennsylvania one yard at a time. Thank you so much for listening. 
If you like this episode, feel free to share it with your friends, your family, or anyone you think might like it too. And if you want to support the show, leave us a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It really does help. Or check out our merch store at courageouslykind.org. Take good care, and we'll see you back here real soon.